first of all, give all praises, glory, and honor to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. And I must take homage to uh, our senior pastor, uh, Pastor uh, James Amen. Sr. Lady James, God bless you. Uh, certainly, my, I have to say, my son in law, <laughs> Pastor James, and his family in the absence. Uh, my young fellow, Elder Bucket, and his family. Uh, the minister, my uh, Mr. Butler, standing with me. Uh, God bless you. I was looking at his name, left me. <laughs> so I'm going to have to say Mr. Dion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mr. Dorsey, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here with me and wherever you are in your respective places. I know you're standing with me. Amen. Also to um, a lady that came all the way to Mashley Park <laughs> this morning. Uh, Sister James just to be with me. And also I've got, I've got two other Minister Jameses over here. So that's what happens when you start calling names. Uh, citizens of the kingdom, friends, and uh, anyone else that chose to be with us this morning, God bless you. Uh, we're sitting in the house of prayer together. I am going to ask you to look at a scripture before I pray. And that scripture is Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Thank you for standing in this presence if you're able to. I'm going to go ahead and read that scripture before you're hearing. And so, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against you, anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Right now. And beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, with songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God, the Father. We're going to ask you to continue to pray with us today as we preach and teach from the title, Because You're Children of God. We ask you the question, are you wearing the right clothes? Mm. Let us pray. Okay. Father, we love you so much. Oh God, we bless you. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. Lord, we need you today. Speak through these lips of prayer. Speak through these lips of clay, oh God. Strengthen, Lord. Touch hearts today. Lift our heads. Forgive us, Lord, where we've fallen short. Thank you for your spirit that stands within us and stand up in us today. Thank you again, oh God, for the opportunity to be used of you to bring glory and honor to you. Yes. Oh Lord, when we all leave this place, anyone that sees us will know that we've been in your presence, for your glory will radiate in our faces and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Because you are chosen of God, are you wearing the right clothes? From our scripture, we shall briefly discuss four topics as we explore these virtues that we've talked about. The character of Christ, the peace of God, the word of Christ, the authority of Christ. 
At the end of the message, we shall stand together in unity and celebrate that we are in fact wearing the right clothes. All right. All right. Simply because we are chosen of God. All right. All right. All right. On June 15, 2016, this year, the Upper Room is an, a devotional that I use along with several others. And uh, that was a title that says, Clothed in Love. It began with a story, and I'll share it with you. My friend Marie had worked for a company for many years. She was efficient and well-liked, and her work was impeccable. However, her position was given to the niece of a new board member, and Marie had no choice but to pack up and leave. But she left, however. Before she left, Marie cleaned up her computer files and made them accessible to the new employee. She dusted and cleaned her bookshelves, and leaving newly sharpened pencils plus markers and a colorful receptacle. She made a short guidebook of helpful hints for the new worker. And on her last day, she thanked the people who had given her the job initially. But why would you do all this? For them when they let you go for absolutely no reason. Mm, my God. And she was questioned. Marie said, I'm going to leave as a Christian, she said. <laughs> all right, all right. I want my name to be associated with kindness. Mm, and to show the love I always felt on this job. Mm -hmm. Amen. In this letter uh, to the Colossians, Paul speaks of the clothes that followers of Christ are to wear. He talks about compassion, kindness, humility, forgiveness, love, with, with love being above all. Marie, Marie left her place of employment with kindness. She was wearing all the right clothes and showed us the power of forgiveness and Christ's love. I don't know if you ever found yourself in a situation like this, like Marie, right. but I right. have right. more than one time. In life, and I had to ask myself the question: Are you wearing the right clothes? Yeah. I asked myself first: Are you wearing the right clothes? Mm -hmm. So I can come to friendship and ask you: Are you wearing the right clothes? Yeah. Can you imagine how ridiculous you would look if you went to buy a new suit or refused to take off the one you had on? Insisting that the new one should be tried on without getting rid of the old one? Mm. This is what many Christians try to do. Yeah. Yeah. They try to put the garment of new life uh -huh. on over their old nature. Uh -huh. It just doesn't fit. Come on. We must put aside the first sin first yes. and then put on the new person. Yeah. Take off and then put on. Doesn't fit when you try to put it together. A Christian's conduct is what other people see you do. Just as clothes can indicate what kind of person you are, careful or careless, a soldier or a civilian, a king or a commoner, so outward expression will show who you are and whom you serve. Now, Paul thinks of our new nature in Christ as putting on the new man. This new nature received from Christ is always being renewed as we grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. I believe when we know better, we should do better. Amen. But we must not become so absorbed in our great privileges in Christ that we neglect our duty to our fellow humans. Right. Our knowing Christ should make us much more thoughtful of others. All right, right. Thus the new Christian also puts on or adds to his or her life. Let us put on the virtues of this new life such as tenderness, <coughs> kindness, humility, patience, forgiveness, and love. Yes, these are the things with which we are to adorn ourselves. If we lived clothed like this, we would find perfection on earth. All right, now. 
Paul says that all of these virgins are like pieces of clothing, all held in place by a belt of love. This fills our lives with the peace of God. Yeah. Furthermore, a Christian heart is a singing heart. Christ wants us to be taught in his word, and then he wants us to express our joy in him by singing hymns. Let's take a look at the character of Christ. You remember verse 12 that begins with, and so, and the New American Standard, and it begins with, therefore, in the NIV. It is a reminder to us to remember what came before and therefore it serves as an introduction. In the previous verses, Paul said that you had died with Christ and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That you are to consider yourselves dead to sin. Mm -hmm. That's what the word says. Yeah. That you are to put aside abusive things. Right. That's what the word says. Right. And that you are to put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created us. Yes. Right. This means that the old self has been put off. That's right. Off put away. All right. The old self with its passions and desires, its wants and its needs, and its pride and self-centeredness. Mm. It has been put off because you have died with Christ. Right. Because you were born again, because the Holy Lord has made you His. Right. He has made us His. Oh, yes. And as a Christian, your proper response to God is to live as He wants you to live. Right. Because you have taken Christ into your hearts, because I've taken Him into my heart, we need to behave as though that were true. All right. Additionally, uh, we've been chosen of God. There is sometimes a great deal of debate in churches, Christian radio, and books on the doctrine of predestination. This doctrine states that from all eternity, God predestined who will be saved. And this sermon, uh, this message is not for clarifying that issue, but the text says that we have been chosen. Uh -huh. That is stated elsewhere in the Bible. Uh -huh. Second Thessalonians 2.13 says, But we should always give thanks to God Amen. for you, uh -huh. brethren beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. Uh -huh. Then 1 Timothy 5.21 says, I solemnly charge you uh -huh. in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of his chosen angels to maintain these principles without bias, right, doing right. nothing in a spirit of partiality. Right, right. Go full force with it. Second uh -huh. Timothy uh, 2 and 10 says, For this reason, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, uh -huh. that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. and with it eternal glory. Yeah. Your life, my life, is to be faithful responses to God's choosing us. Uh -huh. He chose us for sanctification and salvation. Uh -huh. And that response takes many forms. Again, verse 12 says, because you are chosen of God, uh -huh. holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, uh -huh. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving each other as Jesus has forgiven you. God has chosen you. To be chosen of God means that from the foundations of the world, God has elected you to salvation. You are eternally secure in his choice. God does not change his mind, nor does he make mistakes. Once we're in him, it's done. I don't care what people think about you, say about you, it's done. Once and all. Nothing man can say or do can change that. We now belong to God. And because of his choosing you, there are certain benefits which are, are yours and mine. You are made holy by the blood of his son Jesus. You are set apart from the Lord and his holy word. I don't care what people make you feel like. You are loved by God and you are cared for. As a loving response to God's choosing, you want to put on a heart, again, compassion, uh -huh. kindness, yes. 
Yeah. Humility, gentleness, and patience. I don't care what we see. All right. This is what we're supposed to do. All right. All right. All right. This list is not exhaustive, but it is representative of those virtues that speak of your relationship to others well, as well. God has not called you out of the world to be alone. All right. He has chosen you to exist within the context of a Christian church. Yeah. Within the context All right, of a Christian now. church. All right. All right. You are not a pebble removed from the beach. You are hmm, you are gathered together with others of the same mind uh -huh. and heart. Right. Gathered right. together. Yeah. Not separating. Gathered together. Yeah. With the same mind and the same heart. Right. Now, put on first occurs in Colossians in chapter 3, verse 10, and then again in verse 14. In the Greek is the verb ontio, which means to sink into clothing, to put on, to clothe oneself. Mm -hmm. This is important because you are commanded to do this. It's not a choice. You are commanded to dress up with the right virtues, to put on, to clothe yourself with the new self. Right. To bear with one another means to endure, to stand up under, to be tolerant of. Right. To forgive means to forgive as Jesus forgave you. Right. Jesus is the standard of forgiveness. Right. Jesus taught us to pray, Father, forgive us our debts yes. as we forgive our debtors. Right. At the same time, we are forgiven, so we shall forgive.
comes easier when there is love. Yeah. Unity kind of flows when there's love. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can hear uh, Sister Marion, she would always say that. Remember to love. Yeah. Remember to love. Right. And when God was putting this message together, I could hear her voice saying, remember to love. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It gets easier when we operate with God through us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Unity means that within the body of Christ, there is harmony. Yeah. Harmony. Yeah. You've heard music when all the chords hit together. Yeah. 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 That's the way the house of prayer is supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Operating in harmony. Yeah. And that is very important for several reasons. First of all, it glorifies God. Yeah. We're made to glorify Him. Don't you know that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're supposed to dress up right so we can glorify Him. Yeah. First of all. The believers will look upon the church of Jesus and see how it operates. Mm -hmm. They know that if it is God and it's people of God, then it will be godly. Right. If, you heard me say if, yeah. if it is, then his people are going to be godly. All right. Strife, separation, yeah. disagreement yeah. is ungodly. All right. It's ungodly. I, know who, I don't care who's operating in it, it's ungodly. All right. It has no place in the house of prayer. Yeah. Sacrifice, humility, enduring, forgiving, and loving. These things are God. Right. Right. It helps you to further the work of God for which the church of Christ has been called. Mm -hmm. Our growth can get be stunted if we're not operating in a spirit of love, right. in a spirit of unity. Yeah. We've got to first and foremost glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. Early in chapter two, verse eight, Paul urges you to not to be taken captive by philosophy. Mm. Mm. The traditions of me. All right. You mean, uh, are the elementary principles of the word. It is not knowledge or philosophy that truly unites God's people. It's his love. Yeah. God's love. Yeah. Your love for him and toward others your forgiveness and your goodness should be your response to his love for you. Right. Now that's the character of Christ. Right. We describe. Now let's talk about, just a little bit about, uh, the peace of God. Right. Verse 15 says, because you are chosen of God, holy and beloved, again your response should be to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Right. The peace right. of Christ should rule in your heart. Where well, before there was a storm in your soul, we all disturbed and angry and upset. Now, there is peace. As Christ commanded to see peace, be still, and it was. So also the peace of Christ. It will. I know what I'm talking about. It will calm your soul. All those emotions will be settled when God speaks, yeah. peace is a blessing. You can't put a price on that. Right. It is contentment. It is a rest and assurance that trust of God. Believe that he loves you and is working for your good in your life. Yeah. Trust him. Yeah. Don't concern ourselves with what it looks like. And I'm talking right. to myself when I say this. Right. Hallelujah. you yeah. got to focus on his love. Yeah. The word let here is not in the original text. Literally, the translation here is, and the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Yes. But the word let is definitely implied and included in several translations. To let something occur is significant. On one hand, God is active in electing you. And that specially elected you. Right. He elected me. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you are active in letting the peace of Christ rule in your heart. You're elected. Right. Now we're expected to allow the peace of God rule in our hearts. All right. All right. You have to want this. You gotta want it. That's right. And to choose it. It's a decision that we have to make. Right. It is there because Jesus is there. Do we ask him in our hearts? Yeah. Yeah. And he's there. Yeah. The peace of Christ is always with you. We just gotta take it. Right. You simply need to allow it to work in your heart. It's there. Amen. Right. Just get all the other stuff out of the way. Take off that old stuff. And put on the things, the virtues that we should be walking in. Right. Now, how do you do this? By 
I trust in God. Yeah. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Right. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Can you do it yourself? I believe that. But by the power right. of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. By obeying God. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything. All right. And that's what the verse tells us. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything. Everything. I heard this at life studies for these things. My prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And the peace of God. The result is the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. You might be babbled by it, but transcends all understanding. It will guard. It means to be an umpire, right. um, right. to decide, to determine, uh -huh. to direct, uh -huh. to control, uh -huh. to prove. Uh -huh. Therefore, the peace of Christ will direct and control your hearts. Uh -huh. I, I like that. Yeah. Uh, this is significant because out of the abundance of the heart, uh -huh. out, of the, out of the abundance of the heart, yeah, exactly. mm, yeah. The mouth speaks. That's right. That's right. That's right. You can listen to most folks folk, folk saying they might say one thing and do something else. Right. But now, out of the, the words that told me, That's That's out of the heart, what I hear out of that mouth, yeah. That's right. That's what's there. That's right. So listen. I believe the word says be slow to listen, did it not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. better to ask a person out of a piece of heart than out of an angry one. That's right. right. Hallelujah. I read somewhere, I believe it's in the Bible somewhere. Uh, that a soft-spoken answer will quench the wrath. Uh, yeah, is that not true? Right, yeah, right. The peace right. of God. Oh, yeah. It is better to make a decision out of a peaceful heart than out of a word one. Mm. Hmm. Well, we talked a little bit about the character of Christ. Um, a little bit about the peace of God. Mm -hmm. Let's just check out the word of Christ, what it says. Right. Verse 16. Because you are chosen of God, See what you are? You're chosen of God. Amen. You're holy mm -hmm. and beloved. Mm -hmm. Then you let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let the, let the what? The word of Christ mm -hmm. dwell mm -hmm. in you. Not what man is telling you. Right. Not what you see in the world on TV, but the word of Christ yes. deal richly right. in you. Right. If the word of Christ richly dwells within you, then every thought Every thought, every word, and every deed will conform to God's will. In the come on, the line up, the word says, if the word of Christ is within you, then it can move upon your heart. It can correct your thoughts. I'm a witness. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I live it. It can shape your attitudes and your behaviors. Because when that thought's there and you act it out, then comes the behavior. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right. It even can correct and, and, and set right your dealings with others. Right. If the word of Christ is within you, it can even shape how you react to different situations. That's right. It will. Right. It will. Amen. Can I get a witness? It will. It will. It will. Right. Psalm 119 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Right. I've hidden it, Lord, That's so it'll come up when I need it. Yeah. I don't want to sin against you. I don't want to bring shame to your name. Right. Oh, Lord, I've hidden your word in my heart. Right. You are to meditate on the word and to make it part of you. We know this already. We just have to do it, don't we? Right. If the word of Christ richly dwells in you, then you are going to bear fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah. Yeah. Are you wearing the right clothes? Yeah. Are you wearing the right clothes? 
Some of the fruit are already mentioned in verse 12, but also here in verse 16. The fruit of sin, and I thought about Deke when, I, when the Lord gave me this part, are worship of thankfulness to God. See what the second half of verse 16 says? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Because you are chosen of God, you want to be thankful. I've got to be thankful. I like that little chorus, thank you Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You've been my friend. Yes. Yes. You made a way out of nowhere. Thank you, Lord. 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 You saved my soul. Thank you, Lord. Songs and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing to God in a thankful spirit. This is a natural result and response to the indwelling word of Christ. Yes. If it's in you, it's going to come out. That's right. And sometimes it'll come out in a song. Right. I'm not concerned about your voice, but it will come out. Right. It should be a natural response to every Christian who has been chosen and loved of God. Yes. We talked about Christ's character, all those virtues, the peace of God, the word of Christ. Now let's just talk a little bit about the authority of Christ. We're in verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, whatever you do, is very general. I believe Paul is allowing you to apply this for yourselves. Whatever you do, it can mean many things from suffering to praising, mm -hmm. from giving to taking. All right. Uh, whether um, you're putting on a heart of compassion, whatever you do, whether it be to love God or to love your neighbor, whether you're dancing like our children danced earlier, or just singing wow. in the choir, yeah. whether you're standing as an usher or a greeter, yeah. if you're sitting in a pew, whatever you do, whether it be to love God or to love your neighbor, whether it be putting on a heart of compassion, kindness, and love, or forgiving your brother and sister in Christ, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Do so in the name of Jesus. The name means everything. I can think of the name of Jesus and call some things that he's been to me. But everybody in this room can think of something different that he's been to you. His name means Everything. Yes, yes, yes. As we conclude, we employ you to determine in your hearts to respond to God's election by responding to others with compassion, yes. mm -hmm. with kindness, All right. with humility, with gentleness, and with yes. patience. Determine in your hearts to respond to God's choosing by responding to others with love. Mm -hmm. Determine in your hearts. Make a decision. Be intentional about it. Determine in your hearts to respond to God's love by letting the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and therefore your lives. Oh, my. Determine in your minds to let the word of Christ rest as well within you by meditating on it, memorizing it, learning from it. And all this, do in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Keep it in mind the eight virtues we are to put on. Two which describe why, how we are to treat others. Tender mercies, which is a heart of compassion and kindness. All right, all right. Two depict the state of mind we are to possess. Humility, humbleness of mind and need. All right. which is gentleness and mildness. Three virtues relate to how we should act when mistreated. Long-suffering, all right, all right. patience, forbearance, slowness in avenging wrongs, mm -hmm. bearing with one another to sustain or endure, and then there is forgiving one another. Right. To do a favor, just give them a favor. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> to part. Forgiving others is a demand because we have been forgiven by Christ. Yeah. Now the final virtue is love. Yeah. Agape. Yeah. Goodwill. Yeah. Benevolence. Yeah. Described by Paul as the bond of perfection. Yeah. Yeah. The perfect tie that binds the other virtues together like a belt that binds a piece of clothing. We've been talking, been talking about those virtues, those clothing that we're to wear. Well, that, that love comes as a belt and holds it all together. Without love, none of the other virtues can last. With it, the others can be easily maintained. Remember Marie in our story? Well, Marie, even, she even prayed. She said, Creator God, even in adverse circumstances, Help us to share your love and grace right. with everyone right. around us. It worked for Marie. All right. I think All it'll right. work for All me right. and you. Right. Yeah. Now, I, I, I was happy to laugh because I had about three or four people uh, about to go to sleep. Uh, but I know they know <laughs> the virtues that we're talking about this morning. I, I just want to ask you, have you ever been in a situation where uh, your tongue is almost kind of leaked out and you said some stuff you really should have. All right. I, I, I wonder if you could just stand with me, kind of wake up and stand with me, uh, if you've been there, but yet you remember the clothes that you're supposed to wear, and you kept your mouth shut. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Has, any, has anybody ever disrespected you? All right. Hallelujah. All right. And you could show out if you wanted to all up in your flesh? Yes. But I believe that term that you pulled, that, that, that the article that you put on was me. Which is, uh, uh, it is power under control. Yeah, yeah, God's got me with this love. He got it all together. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to say. Do what you want to do. And look at me how you want to look at me. Look about me how you want to think. I know the God that I serve. He's got me. And he's holding me together with that better love. Oh. 